Well, record number of COVID-19 cases continue to be reported in San Diego County despite the latest order to enhance restrictions. The number of cases appear to continue to climb. And here to talk more about why slowing the spread of the virus will take a concerted effort by everyone in the community is Professor Kimberly Prather from Scripps Institution of Othenography. She is also a distinguished professor in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at UC. San Diego. Good morning, Dr. Prather. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, Liz. Thanks for having me. So tell me, Professor, um, a concerted effort. Why do you think that this is going to take a concerted effort? And what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, there's no other way to put it, but uh, we all have to come together and fight this virus. Um, and it's going to take everyone working together. Uh, we've kind of been trying this sort of, you know, half halfway sort of way of looking at doing things. And you can see that it's just sort of spread things out. We kind of start and then we stop and then we start and then we stop. And so if we all, I mean, it's, it's been shown in other places that if everybody just works together and, you know, wears masks and, you know, avoids crowded indoor places, and, you know, just all the things you've been hearing, if everybody did that, we could shut this virus down. Mm. And, but it's going to take, if, if just, if there's, it, it sort of gets through, if just, you know, a quarter of the people don't listen, it will just keep churning. And so it really takes a community, a really concerted community effort. You know, in the number of interviews that I've done and my colleagues have done, uh, people say they are very, very confused about what to do, although they understand that, yes, wearing the mask in so many cases, if not in all cases, will reduce, you know, the spread of it. There's confusing information coming out, as you know as well, from our government. I mean, you know, we have our, the state health department saying, well, we don't have the evidence that supports for for example, that the spread is happening inside of restaurants, but yet we are shutting down indoor dining. What's your response or your reaction when you hear that people are conf confused about what to do and what to believe? Yeah, I understand the confusion, and I um, and I've spent a huge amount of time uh, doing interviews to try and get the word out. There's a whole group called, um, if you go to Twitter, called COVID is Airborne. I mean, if I truly believe, if the public just is told the truth, you know, this virus is spread in the air. You get sick by inhaling it. Um, if you go to indoor locations, it's like basically if they're poorly ventilated indoor locations, you know, it's like cigarette smoke. It builds up and it fills the whole room. So no, you know, no amount of social, I mean, it's better to be further apart from the person who's potentially infected, right? The challenge with this virus is we don't know who's sick. A lot of times these people have, the people that are spreading it don't have any symptoms yet. And so basically you have to, you know, indoors is the riskiest location without question. What I will say is that there are ways to fix that. So what I'm sort of trying to get out to the community is, you know, let's knock it back. We have to stop the spread, especially with the variant that is now here, which is going to, which is even more um, transmissible. Uh, so we have to knock it back. If we knock it back, then what we're going to do, and I, you know, the county is raring to go on this, is that we can start working with the county and open things up wisely, smartly. But, but Dr. Prather, how do we reopen and stay open safely. I mean, when it comes to ventilation, for example, yeah. ventilation is a huge issue, is a huge concern, as, as you know more than I do. How do we yeah. do this? Here you go. So can you see this? This is a little CO2 sensor. It's this small. And if people just had these in their businesses, which this is what they're doing in places like Japan and other places where they're successfully, it just measures CO2 levels, which is what you breathe out. So the higher this number, the more you're sort of sharing the air with other people. And if people, you know, you don't have to fly blind and that's what we've been doing. So if you don't, you know, it's a simple measurement. If you don't, um, you don't need to fly blind. You could actually just know what you're, you know, if, if those numbers are too high, then you open a window or you put in better filtration. Once you acknowledge this is the challenge and this is we're leaning on sort of the government to get this more clear, even in California, once you acknowledge it's in the air, clean the air, you can filter the air, you can add fresh air from outside. I mean, we live in San Diego, um, but that's what, you know, basically indoors is the place where we see most of the spread, almost all of the spread. Um, and it's because it just gets trapped and it just builds up over time. And so the longer you're indoors, it's produced by people who simply are speaking. 
it's not produced necessarily by coughs and sneezes. Those people we hope are staying home. And so, you know, they're what I'm, what I'm really encouraging, and I will work with local businesses. I've been getting lots of emails lately um, on how to do this, but there is a smart way to reopen. Other places have done it. And if we do it in, you know, again, first we have to knock things back. And then this time I'm going to help um, with trying to get things to open in a smart way. There is no reason the places that have adhered to masks, avoided indoor risky situations, those places never close down. Do you, I mean, that's, the, hmm. you know, we economy they never shut down and i you know i can't say that enough and so if we can just follow the rules right now the recommendations i should say um we can we can get things open i have no doubt in my mind that we can and i feel for the businesses big time i mean i can see how everybody's feeling and everybody's frustrated and it's frustrating to me too because we know enough it's not true that we don't know enough we do know this virus transmits through the air we should be cleaning the air less focus on cleaning surfaces i mean still a little bit sure. gets through but the air is really where it's at. Well, this has been a very enlightening, uh, Professor. We really appreciate your time. We understand, and I get it. Uh, you know, take the personal responsibility, wear the mask, do what you have to do, what you should be doing. Uh, and I know you're not calling for a full lockdown. And in fact, you're actually showing us a, carbon, a CO2 sensor that yeah. could help in the yeah. ventilation and trying to keep... Uh, you know, businesses open. So we appreciate that so much. We'd love to continue to uh, call upon your expertise. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for getting the word out. And again, I really appreciate it. We can get there. All right. But we have to thank you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Kimberly Prather. Uh, again, a distinguished professor over at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography, as well as at UC San Diego. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye, Liz.